Praise God. It's always amazing when you when you do things and God like patting you on the shoulder and say, Great job. Well done. It's so easy to get accustomed to the ways of this world. And then, not to look spiritual, because people want to look spiritual. And they, they try to be spiritual. There's not many people that can say everything in my life is okay. If we cannot say everything is okay, then it means there's something that oppresses something in our lives that we need to take care of. But we have to become sensitive. Satan is just stupid. That he think we cannot see. He thinks that he, he can send a few demons and we don't see them. He picked the wrong church. He just picked the wrong, he can go to other churches. Maybe he's there. But he picked the wrong church. Come and do that. We're not allowed to that. We will not allow that. I cannot allow it not in your life. I want to, but I cannot. You must allow it not to happen in your life. But in my life, no room. No compromise. No compromise. For the past few Sundays, we've been talking about um, the anointing. I'm going to finish today on, on that. Because I just believe that it's very important to understand. It's, it's so easy to say from the pulpit, read your Bible. I don't know if there's any preacher anywhere that doesn't do that. That doesn't say to you, study your Bible. All of them do. So what we've done in this past three weeks with today is we've been speaking on the anointing. Understand the anointing because it's easy to say I'm anointed. And yes, if you're born again, you are anointed. So what we spoke about was the first anointing. And that was the anointing that you find in 1 John 2 verse 27. That was the first anointing. And it says that that anointing is within. It's within you. That is the anointing that you receive the day that you give your life to Jesus. The day that you come and you say, here I am. From today on, I want to serve you. That happens within. It happens within. Inside of your heart. Let me draw a man.
it happens inside your heart there. This It doesn't happen in your mind. It happens in your born again spirit. And when it happens, it stays. That scripture says it stays, it abides. It's not going to go away. It's going to stay there inside. It abides in your heart. But this anointing that's within you, it grows. Yes. It grows. This anointing grows. The second anointing that I spoke of was the one that is so much loved. In Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be by my witness in all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So this anointing is one that comes upon you. When God wants to use you, it comes upon you. If God wants you to minister to somebody, that anointing, this anointing comes upon you. You can much connect this anointing with the functioning of the gifts of the Holy Spirit of 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 8 to 10. A word of wisdom, a word of understanding or knowledge, a word of faith, prophecy. Much functions there. But I, 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 I demonstrated, I said, this is the man. And there's an anointing inside you that you receive the day that you got born again. And this anointing grows. This anointing don't grow. Because that's what a gift is. It's a gift. It's given. So this anointing, the gifts of Holy Spirit that, that you have, don't grow. But the anointing of 1 John 2.27, that grows. And now, God sees you grow. And He finds out that you are growing rapidly, strongly, powerfully. And now, you want to use you. And that's where the gifts come in. That anointing. Because that is the power of God given unto you. So that you can be a demonstration. This is what happened with the gift. The first anointing grows. It grows. You make it grow. The stronger it grows, the more this will work. If the pillar is not strong enough to carry the gifts, it will break. It will be polluted. It will be contaminated. People will preach from out of another spirit. People will heal and they are in sin. They will give somebody a prophecy and they've got a black label behind the back. That is the pollution of the gifts that God gives and He gives it free. You didn't ask for it. He gave it. 
But it only comes into action the stronger you get inside. The anointing that's inside is for you. It's your responsibility to make it grow. The anointing that comes upon you is not for you. When you prophesy to somebody, if you pray for somebody, that's not for you. It's for somebody else. I understand what it means when the anointing that comes upon is heavier, stronger than the anointing inside. Somewhere you walk into a wall and you don't know why. But when you become strong inside, God allows all those gifts, those anointing, to function through your life. To demonstrate who He is. But that anointing that comes upon you, it doesn't stay. It doesn't abide. It doesn't grow. It only comes when God sees that He can use you to do something. The third anointing is the one from Isaiah 10 verse 27. And that anointing is over nations. Over nations. An anointing that's breaking the yoke. Many people say that the anointing breaks the yoke. They don't understand the scripture. But this anointing breaks the yoke. It is that anointing that is set over nations, over kingdoms. It's that anointing that roots out and pulls down, that destroys and throws down and pull and plumb. That anointing of Isaiah 10 verse 27 is triggered by men and women that God has called mainly in the office of the prophetic. But this first anointing, this first anointing, it comes to you and me at salvation. The day that we got born again. It is that anointing that you received of Him. It's not from Him, it's of Him. And it abides. It abides. It stays. I think this is the most difficult thing to understand the fact that people can drift away from God. But it stays. People fall, people say, I fall in love. Isn't it, is it the same? People say, I fall in love. And then six months later, they fall out of love. So you fall in love, you fall out of love. In and out. Love. That was not love, that was lust. People, when they got born again, there's a supernatural hunger, supernatural love. A supernatural faith that comes to him. He didn't ask for it. He was not looking for it. He didn't even know it existed. It just came with a package. And that is this anointing that you and I receive that we need to make grow. But when people don't grow it, they fall out of love with God. They're getting missing. They serve God two, three, four years with passion. And then suddenly they just... They get lost. A lot of back. And you don't understand why. How is it possible that you can lose it? 
When God said that stays, it abides. How is it that those people can get lost? You don't see them anymore. Easy. They don't grow this. If you don't grow this, you will fall out of love with God. You see, the moment that that anointing comes inside of you and me, what is amazing about that? It says that that is so much enough that you don't need anybody to teach you anything. That anointing is enough to teach you everything. Because in that anointing, there's only truth. There's no lie in it. But man is like this. Can you imagine if everybody understands that and grasps that with everything they have in their hands and they grow their, their, that anointing to places of maturity? Do you know how a church would look like? Can you imagine for one moment we gather on a Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and everybody has got a testimony of the healings, of the deliverances, of the resurrections they've done through the week. Can you imagine how that atmosphere, powerful electric, static atmosphere that would be if everybody has got something to say and say, listen, you think you healed that one's leg. Praise God. He used me to put the eye in the socket. Can you imagine if just can be there? What the world will say and how the world will look at you. I promise you, your manager. Your boss, your employer, he will treat you like gold. But if you don't do this, this don't come. And you don't become a demonstration. This anointing that comes inside of a man, the day that you are born again, it is for the spirit of man, the spirit man. It comes in salvation and it comes to stay it's inside, it abides in your heart for eternity. And that anointing that is inside here, you can call it also the presence of When the presence of God enters your heart, your words become like Jesus said, me and my Father, we are one. The reality is, my brother, my sister, if you are born again, you are one with Father. Corinthians 6 17 says this but the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with the Lord the person who is united with the Lord are you united with the Lord if you are born again you are so that scripture says you become one spirit with the Lord 
You're one. So in becoming one spirit with the Lord, that power that comes out of that union between the two of you, that power, that power is that what He pours into your life because of that unity. He releases that power in your life because of that unity. I want to show you something. Turn for me to Ephesians 3 verse 20. I want to show you something. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now, not tomorrow. Now, it's an immediate thing. It's not something that can happen tomorrow. If I say to you, I want you to do it for me now, not not tomorrow. Now. And it goes on and says, Unto Him. Is the Spanish correct of Him? So it's unto Him. Who is Him? something that is for now, not for tomorrow. It's for the immediately. Unto Him. Speaking about Jesus. So Jesus, Jesus, who is able. If I say, you are able to to sing. It means that It's not a definite. You are able to sing. It means that you're not sure if you can sing, but you are able. So it, it's not a secure place to be able. Now unto him who is able. So Jesus is able. Not really. Is he able? Is he not able? It doesn't look if he's able. To do. So there's things that Jesus is able to do, and there might be things that he's not able to do. That's what it says. And the things that he is able to do is super abundantly. The King James says exceedingly. Exceedingly, abundantly, over. The King James doesn't say above. Over and above. I said just says above, not over. The amplified is over. Above. Now to him, unto Jesus, he's able. He's able to do things that is super abundantly, that is exceedingly, that is not measurable. There is no measuring stick for what he can do. And he, he will do it abundantly, not sparingly, abundantly. Over. 
over and above. This is above. You will do it over, above, over, above. Is that what it says? And it says what you can. As all things. Is it what, what says what it says there? So he's able to do exceedingly abundantly over and above what you can ask or think. Is it what it says? Help me, please. Okay. That word ask is the same word that says baby. And that word thing. It's the same word that has a description that says, I'm not sure that it will help, that it will do it. So what happens here is, read that verse for me, uh, Sonnet. In us, he's able to do super abundantly through this anointing. If that anointing doesn't grow, you'll question his abilities. You want things to happen in your life supernaturally, but you don't want to grow. So now what you do is you beg Jesus to come and do it for you. Come Jesus, please Jesus. Oh Jesus, we come to you today and we ask you that you will come and that you will give me a job. That you will restore my house. That you will restore my family, my, my friends, my children. And, and he's just standing one side and says, I've given you that anointing. That power that you received the day that you got born again is inside of you. And it's through that power. It's through the power that you will work. That power inside of you is enough to do super abundantly over and above. Do the dunamis that according to your growth inside depends the power that you carry depends on the growth inside. If there is a growing inside, if you're getting stronger and stronger in God, now it says, this able, Jesus is not going to do it for you. But that word power 
there. Dunamis. His name is Holy Spirit. His name is Holy Spirit. It is Him that's going to do it through you. But if you don't grow, He's not going to do it through you. You see, this anointing of the inside, the presence of God that's inside of us, you, do you know what is that? That is just, it is the overflow of the life of Jesus that you can hear. That's what it is. So I'm growing the overflow of the life of Jesus. I'm getting to know Jesus. I'm growing closer to Jesus. I started to think like Jesus, do like Jesus, feel like Jesus. That is what that anointing does. That presence of God inside of us. It is just another description to say. It's the overflowing life of Jesus. Then he say that it's the devil that come to come and steal, kill and to destroy. But it's me, Jesus, that came so that you can have life. In abundance. A life. An abundance. The Amplified adds onto that says, to the full, to the flow, to the full, to the full, till it overflows. So that you and I can have the overflowing life of Jesus in us. The presence of God is that what's in your heart. And it's out of that oneness with Him, with the Lord, that this overflowing of power comes. The power. It's the same name for dunamis comes immediately into your heart at salvation it's not going to come someday it comes immediately your ability to minister your ability to function in the gifts it's there from day one but it doesn't function if you don't grow the anointing inside It is like you having a, a, a supersonic jet in your garage. Praise God, you've got a supersonic jet. It's so beautiful. He's white with red stripes. It's so beautiful. You must see the tires. You must see the nose. You must see the ball street, the seats inside. Wow. Have you flown it now? Not yet. Oh, but it's so beautiful. When are you going to fly? I don't know. That anointing that comes, that dunamis that comes the day of salvation, immediately, not tomorrow, not the day after, immediately, if that born again was a real born again, immediately, I'm hungry for God. Immediately, immediately, I'm so hungry for Him, I don't know Him. I'm still in that place of dream all the hell of God and you want to father do that. Immediately I'm hungry. Immediately. I've got faith. Immediately I love him so much. So much. I fall in love with Jesus just there. I love you Jesus. I haven't seen him. I haven't heard of him. I haven't spoke to him. I, I, I'm just loving him. That all begins. If that begins to grow. Your hunger for God must grow. Your, your faith in God must grow. Your love for God must grow. The moment that starts to grow suddenly. I'm jumping into the word. I'm consumed by the Word of God. And that Word of God, the more I eat the Bible, the more I read the Bible, the more I study the Bible, 
the more that anointing gets stirred out, it ignites inside of me. And that word, the more I eat it, the more that word becomes my life. So now, we begin to feed on the Word of God and our faith levels rise. Now I can trust Him for things that I never in my life thought that I can trust Him for. I can trust Him for crazy stuff. And that faith that grows, what He gave unto you and me, you can read that in Romans 12, verse 2. It is the measure of faith. People love to speak about the mustard seed of faith. If you can only have a mustard seed of faith, you will say to the mountain, lift yourself up and move you and, and move into the sea, and it will go. If that seed is just like a mustard seed, size given to you and me. Imagine if we make that thing grow. Imagine birds can start eating from the fruit of that mustard seed tree that it involves. That measure of faith you receive it today at new birth. But it grows. I'm not talking about belief. The Afrikaans are a little bit funny there. When it says groen, I groen God. I believe in God. The demons also. They also believe. But they don't have faith. It grows. In your heart. And it is not the same as the gift of faith. The gift of faith of 1 Corinthians 12. It's not the same. The gift of faith doesn't grow. If the anointing inside don't grow, most probably you will never function in the gift of faith. It is the gift of faith that opens the blind eyes. It is the gift of faith that opens the deaf ear. It is the gift of faith that makes the cripple walk. But if you don't grow the anointing inside, you see that that gift of faith <coughs> is also called special faith. Special faith or wonder working faith. It only happens when you minister. It doesn't grow. It doesn't grow. Remember I spoke about three realms of faith in the series. That measure of faith that's inside of you. God comes and He plants a seed. A seed in the grounds of your heart. And that seed, oh, I watched one day National Geographic, and they spoke about trees that drop their seed, and the seed is dormant in the earth, and it can be there for 40 odd years dormant in the earth and it only needs a fire so that place is getting a blaze in a fire and that fire is so hot on that seed that it cracks open it starts to grow I'm telling you today brothers and sisters many people has been going through the fire in their lives going through trials and tribulations, difficult times in their lives. What is it that's going to take the seed that God planted in your heart to germinate 
to catch fire, to start living. How long do you still want to go through the difficulties? He places that seed in our hearts and it's growing there. And when it starts to grow there, it produces fruit. The gift of faith, it only enables you to demonstrate the great confidence. Listen to what I'm saying. The gift of faith only gives you the ability to demonstrate the great confidence that you have in God as your source, as your provider, as the one that makes you manifest in His name. It is that faith that moves mountains. But the fruit of faith, it's only the outgrow. It's the result of the measure of faith. If you grow inside that anointing, and that anointing becomes stronger and more powerful and more powerful, then that do carry a fruit that people can eat of. That measure of faith comes at salvation. And all it does, all it does, it makes you say, now I'm a Christian. Now I belong to the family of God. God is my Father. And now I'm in the Spirit. I don't have to read it somewhere. I don't need to go and research it. I just know that God is now my Father. It is there when that hunger comes, given none of us asked for it. And it comes and it drives me into the Word because now as I went to the days when I had to go and visit my, my wife, my girlfriend, I had to spend time with her, so much time so that I can learn her and know her and that I can build this love relationship. And eventually we got engaged and we got more, seeing more of each other. And suddenly we got married and now 36 years later we are still married. That little seed that grows in our hearts, that measure, when it starts to grow, it grows. And now I can trust God. I can trust Him. I can have faith in Him. And the moment I start having faith in Him, now my faith starts to grow from one degree of glory to another. When I used to trust Him for a bread, now I can trust Him for something bigger. And that is what the Bible says about Romans 10 verse 17. It says, Faith comes. Faith isn't. Faith isn't. It comes, and it comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of the Lord. So that's why we are here, so that faith can come. So that you can hear the word of the Lord. And by hearing the word of the Lord, faith comes. And when it comes, it grows and it grows and then it produces fruit and that fruit of faith is holiness it's righteousness it's peace and it's joy all of us grow you sit and you listen to me when i speak i also listen to me so we all grow we all learn we all hear 
basically what happens is the fruit of the Spirit begin to appear in my life as a result of that seed that the Bible calls the measure. That the measure is just the seed. It needs to grow. God calls it the measure because it's small. And for it to become big, He's not going to grow it, you grow it. Paul talks about this, he says, when he speaks in you know, 1 Timothy, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse, he says, he says, faith cometh. King James Version, faith cometh. Present continuous tense. So it's something that keeps on coming. It isn't, it comes. Now faith is what it isn't, the substance of something that comes. It is the gift of faith that operates on you when the anointing comes over you. It has got almost nothing to do with the anointing inside, the gift of faith. When that growing of the word takes place in our lives, when that our hunger comes, when that hunger drives us into the word of God, it ignites you. It ignites that power. It ignites the gifts. And the Holy Spirit comes and explodes through you. It explodes through the Word of God. Because that's what the word dunamis means. It's a Latin word for dynamite. It explodes. When the Holy Spirit comes and explodes. When the Word of God starts exploding in my heart. Then when I begin to go deeper and deeper into the Word. Because what I find, where I am in the Word, and that's got the ability to stir me because of the power that works in me. If I see the result of it, I want more. I want to go deeper. Remember I spoke about the levels of Scripture. Different levels that you find in Scripture. For many people when they read just information, They read the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and earth. They just read the Bible by what they see. And then when you go deeper, you start to understand what God's plan for your life is. And then when you reach the third level, you start to see Jesus. From the Old Testament up to the New Testament in every single chapter of the Bible, you see the revelation of Jesus. You see, the, the early church, they didn't have what we've got. They only had the five books of Noah, uh, of, of Moses, the Torah. They only had the five books. So they only had five books, but what they've done, Peter, John, James, Paul, they only had the five books. But what they've done is they saw Jesus in all of it. And they found Jesus in Genesis. And Jesus, when the moment you find Jesus, He starts to begin to reveal Himself to you everywhere. And when you get into that type of depth, there's a place where I'm very careful when I'm saying this. Where you become to, to experience the thickness of the anointing. A thickness. It starts to be becoming weighty. There's a weight to it. A thickness to it. And that keeps on increasing. Keeps on increasing. And without you knowing this, without you knowing this, when that happens, there's things happen in our lives. You start feeling that something inside of you just begins to pray spontaneously. And you know that you have to open your mouth so that it can come out. And, and the more you keep on doing it, you keep on there. And you keep on there. And suddenly there comes a lightness in your body. 
there comes something and the reality that you are in the reality that you are surrounded by it starts to fade away it becomes something like nothing there's nothing in this realm in this realm is empty because where you find yourself you find yourself in the thickness in the heaviness of the presence of god that weight that weight of that anointing begins to disconnect the flesh the presence of god is supposed to disconnect the flesh it's not how i feel anymore You cannot build this walk on feelings. Because today you feel good. Because there's 100,000 rand in your bank account. And tomorrow you don't feel good because there's nothing in your bank account. So if you want to build your faith, your life with Jesus on feeling how you feel, you're going to slip up. Today I feel like coming to church. Tomorrow I don't feel like coming to church. I'm not going to pray anymore because Jesus doesn't do anything for me. No. No. It's not Him that moves. It's you. The moment of flesh begins to lose its hold. An amazing thing that happens when the flesh begins to lose its hold. Do you want the flesh to lose its hold on you? Do you want to do something that your flesh is not in control of you? I'm telling you there's nothing that you can do to get the flesh submit. Only one thing that silence the flesh. That's why I said when we start to pray before service, I said, raise the volume. Because you cannot stand there and it sounds like a baby. But when you raise your voice, you shut up I can send it again. You know what? My flesh is in rebellion against what I'm doing. My flesh doesn't want to hear this. My flesh doesn't want to be here. My flesh says, go and sit. My flesh says, shut up. My flesh says, keep your mouth shut. No, my spirit says, you flesh, you something. You want to silence the flesh? Start speaking, speaking your tongue. Every time you need to do something and, and, this, and, and you feel like, I need to do this, this is the right thing to do. And the body says, no, I've got something better for you. Start speaking in tongues. A minute later and you will do what the Spirit says. You want to bring destruction to your, to your flesh? You cannot crucify the thing. You cannot cast the flesh out. This thing needs to bounce me. And it doesn't want to bounce me. Because the moment I start to say, I'm going to shit on the raka. You know what my flesh want to tell me? You're stupid. You're making a spectacle of yourself. Keep quiet. Keep it cool. Cool, dude. Just keep this, the, the, this, the, the frequency okay. This is what the flesh wants. And you know why? When I say to you, turn up the volume, I want you to break out of your comfort zone. Because I don't want to hear my, oh, I don't want to hear my husband, we are missing my speaking tongues. Because I don't make that two words. Meru, 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 meru. He's going to think I'm crazy. Keep on doing that, maybe God gives you more. And when you rise, you You know what you're doing? You are bailing yourself out of your own circumstances. You are changing atmospheres. You are changing environments. You are changing your life. You don't know it. 
because you try to figure it out. If I'm not in charge of my intellect, in charge of my mind, things is not true. Things cannot happen. Listen, you want to put your mind into this. Get yourself a boat and go and have time right on Sunday. I'm changing atmospheres. I wish you can see it from my side how it looks like. I'm putting things in place that was out of place. Things that was skewed, I've turned it straight. Things that was bent down, I bent it up. And things that are standing up, I bent it down. In my life, and in, a, in this church, in this environment, And when you start coming in, you say, Oh, Shandakai, Oh, Robo Sitandaka, Oh, Rob Shapinel, Roko Shukuramba, Nesky Toronto. You see, nobody then recognizes what happens when you do that. They think, Oh, then, can we just stop with the service? Let's not waste time. If we start doing it now, and we keep on doing it for an half an hour, it means that this service is going to be three hours long. And this service is just supposed to be 15 minutes. Because 15 minutes is enough. I can only concentrate for three quarters of an hour. Getting to the tongues. So that something can re reorganized, reinstated in your life. The devil wants to... I, I, I don't know if he's in partnership with the body of Christ. It's time for the body of Christ to do something in the spirit and kick some demon butts. If you can get as angry as you can get, I did not have a very good name in the army. When I was a military, I had not a good name. I was a bad dude. I was young. Unverschillig and rookerless. I haven't got Afrikaans English for that. Reckless. And I know how to be angry. I know how to shout and scream and kick and all those things. And I said, Lord, the day that I gave my life to Jesus, I said, Lord, that, I don't want that anymore in my life. So I made work of cutting up with the scissors everything that I had that connected me to that. And I repented that. And I said, Lord, turn that aggression into the spirit so that the same me there can be the same me now in the spirit. And he did. You that get married to wife, married people at work, ask God to change it into the spirit. So that you can get mad to the demons and the devil that tries to occupy our lives. Get mad about the thing that tries to suffocate the churches. Start to scream at those things that try to suffocate the churches. See that thing and kick it. Chase it. And when you're done, you know how good you feel? Because daddy, papa is patting you on the back and says, Well done, son. See, people don't recognize what's happening. When anointing comes, the Jews, when they are standing there at the west wall, 
We're doing this. I don't know if you saw that. It's called shuckling. We shuckle. And that was an expression that happens in their lives. When they shuckle, it becomes more and more and more and more. And the more they do it, the more they go into the depths of God. And when they do it, when you do it, you start beginning to experience the different realms of the Spirit. Moving deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper. I'm in you, Lord, you and me. I'm in you, Lord, you and me. We are one. I'm in you, Lord, you and me. We are one. I love you, Lord, you love me. We are one. I love you, Lord. And before you find yourself, you find yourself not yet. It just becomes, becomes too overwhelming, overpowering. And it's all you want to do. The only place you want to be in is in a secret place. Because you want to stay in that realm. You want to stay in that realm because in that realm is where the things happen that you change because super abundantly over and above what you can think or ask. It starts happening through your life, through the power that's within you. And you start changing atmospheres. And the more you in that, the more you shed that guy or the more sin that I get. After an hour, after two hours, I'm telling you, your body, your body has just got getting unusual strength. People are sick, they stay home. They sick, they stay home. But I see Torun that I can barasi and if you start doing that, you quicken your spirit and your body becomes the one that submits to your spirit and not your spirit to your body. Your spirit is not supposed to submit to your feelings. The flesh just becomes of no use. No use. It's like it doesn't even exist in that realm. It is like Kind of, your flesh shuts down. And you, got, you start beginning to live from the Spirit. You move from the Spirit. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Like, like that space sh shuttle that floats there in, in space. It floats there. It's, it's there. Can you imagine? You're becoming like that in the Spirit. It's another dimension. If you would what if you if you go deeper. If you go deeper, you might have an out-of-body experience. Oh no! Not that out-of-body experience in the body of Christ. Demonic. It's because the church refused to take these things that Satan took it and make use of it. It was never given to Satan. It was given to the church. How do you use somebody in Germany? You said in South Africa? How do you prophesy to somebody in the UK while you're in South Africa? Let's ask Paul and let's ask John about it. John says, in Revelation 1 verse 10, he says, In the day of the Lord, I was in the Spirit. In the day of the Lord, I was in the Spirit. He was in Patmos. But the Lord took him in the Spirit and said, John, I want to show you something in the Spirit. Come, come with me. And he went. And when God, when, G, when, the, when the, Jesus showed him everything at that level, 
And if in uh, Revelation 4 verse 1, he said to him, John, come up higher. There's something more to see. And Paul comes and he says, And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Paul's experience of this was even greater than John's. I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. Meaning that there was a separation taking place in between soul and spirit. Something, something separates soul and spirit. The word of the Lord is like a two-edged sword that separates, that divides flesh and bone, that pierces between the soul and the spirit. The separation of soul and spirit only happens when the word of God becomes so powerful inside of you. When Paul said, I don't know, that's what he literally means. He said, I don't know. That what happened to me there, my intellect stopped. My intellect stopped. He was so in the spirit that his intellect was of no use. It was not necessary to function anymore. And when we find ourselves in all these difficult places of our lives, it's your mind that keeps on running. It keeps on thinking. It wants to sort out. It wants to figure out. It wants to change everything around you. And God gave unto you and me a gift that can silence that projector that keeps on running. That brings up all the pictures, nothing good, all of destruction. And when a thing happens, and, I sit, and I'm sitting in that place and I know that, how are we going to get out of this? I need to silence my mind. I need to get my mind shut up. And now I need to do something inside of me. To make my mind shut up. And the only thing that I know of. You can go and sit there. You can go, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. You can do what many hints say. You can do that. But I've, I found that. The moment I've run out of my decisions. It's like. My mind's still drifting, still not, not where I am. But I carry on. And I still think of the stuff. But I carry on. And my mind doesn't want to let go. He doesn't want to let go. My flesh is still controlling. And then I go and and I'm getting mad at my flesh. And I go louder, and I go louder, and I go louder. Until my flesh says, okay, 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 I'll go. I go. And then I'm there. Then I'm there. And then the word of God becomes so powerful that Moses, even Moses. He had gone eight days without food or drink. He went on to Mount Sinai to receive from God. Forty days he was there. He did not eat, he did not drink in his flesh. And then he came back and he saw what the people did and he went back again for another 40 days. For 80 days he was there. No food, no drink, no sleep, and he was nourished by the presence of God. How can it be? How can a human body, how can, is it possible that you don't need sleep? You don't need to eat? How is it possible? It is possible. 
we're working to, towards that. When the Word of God becomes so alive in us. When the Word of God becomes so alive in us. Jesus, who was tempted in the desert by the enemy, looked for. He did not eat, he did not sleep, he did not drink, and the enemy came and tempted him. If you don't eat, if you don't drink, and if you don't sleep, if you don't eat the Word of God, if you don't drink of the Holy Spirit, and you don't allow God to minister to you while you sleep, you will be tempted. The enemy will come and tempt you in those areas. For 40 days Jesus did not even sleep. And the enemy tempted him. What did he say? He said, man does not live by bread alone. So you can buy your groceries for a month. Weekly basis you can buy your groceries, you can stock your cupboards. Jesus said, man shall not live of bread alone. You cannot live of that alone. But you need to live of the word of God in a realm of God. Food and drink is not needed. When Jesus said, you, you, will not, you shall not live by bread alone. What he meant was this. That the word of God is so powerful that when you are living it, and it is living in you, the requirements of the body don't count because you are the living a supernatural life. Enoch and Elijah, they are still alive in heaven. With, heaven, with fleshly bodies. They are alive. They did not die in the flesh. How is it possible? What is keeping the body of Elijah and Enoch alive in heaven? Both of them are in heaven with their physical bodies right now. But it's sustained by the Word of God. They are living by the Spirit. The Word of God is so alive in them that they don't need nourishment to sustain them in their physical bodies. And they've been awake all these years. Those poor dudes have been long awake. They haven't slept for a long time. Can you imagine? Sure. They live in glory. Is it possible on the earth? I believe that. I, I believe that. But I don't think God will allow that. Because if He does that, we will no more be the testimonies and the witnesses for God. When Moses returned from the Mount Sinai, the Bible says His face shone. It was shining with the glory of God. When a word of God becomes alive in you, I believe it's possible that your face will shine also, that you will have the same experiences. Visions will be normal. Spiritual visions will be normal. Angels will be normal. Angelical visitations will be normal things. It will be normal to be in that realm. And I believe that is coming back to the church. I believe it's coming back to the church. This will become an earthly reality in our days, living in the supernatural, uh, living a supernatural lifestyle in a church. Where the sons of God can experience realms like Philip. He was, a, he was so fortunate, huh? Philip. He just ministered to this guy. God said, I need you in a different place. Okay, God, but... 
God moved him 40 kilometers and he found himself in another place. Elijah, Air Elijah, he was just taken, gone. Can you imagine? This afternoon we ministered in the UK and two hours later we ministered in USA. Just take it. I believe it's all possible. I believe when John said, in the day of the Lord I was in the Spirit. They said that God wanted me to see the Spirit so that I can come and become a testimony of and a, and a, and a, 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 a person of hope giving encourager for the world of what I saw. I don't know if I was in the body or not in the body. God knows. But I can tell you what happens. I believe it's coming back. Spiritual experiences, it belongs to the church. I don't need a devil worshiper to give a testimony of how amazing it was to be a devil worshiper and now turn my life into a Christian and uh, I want my reference to stay Jesus. When you look at our cult, all the practices that the cult does, it was supposed for us to be, we were supposed to do it. But it got contaminated. Full thing. And now they do it. And now we hate them. Because they do what we're supposed to do. That, that guy that's doing astral projection, it cost him something. There's a price to that. It's not for free. If he can pay the price, why should the church not pay the price? To be the testimony of the goodness of Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. I've, 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 I've learned to know my wife and still I discover things on her, in her, on her, over her. So it's never going to end. But I'm not with her where I was 36 years ago. It is not the body that matters to me anymore. I discovered the spirit and the soul. I discovered the daughter of God. And I can fellowship with the daughter of God. Because when we fellowship, we fellowship on the same spiritual level. And understanding. I'm not rushing to the flesh. Because if you if you don't know by now, just take your ID book and go and stand in front of the mirror and you will see. You don't look that beautiful anymore. But you look dead. You've changed by now. So if you're going to fall for what you see, you're going to miss out on a deal. But a spiritual place. Oh, she's my, she's my wife. But before she's my wife, she's God's daughter. And because she's God's daughter, when I look at her, I see Papa. And that's why I respect her, because I see Papa. And I see the work that he's doing in her life. The raising, the rising, the elevation. And that makes me joyful to see what God is doing in your life. To see that you're building muscles. only can happen if, you, if we grow this, this anointing. Grow your anointing. I'm not, I'm not reading the Bible for you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not reading it for you. And I'm not reading it to get a sermon. I'm reading it to build muscles. Amen. Thank you, Father. You made it all so possible for us, Father. 
You've given us everything we needed to be holy as you are holy. I know, I know that that we are in this in this tremendous, beautiful race. It's not always easy. Sometimes the tiredness is just catching up. Sometimes it's the awkwardness of the of the ground that we run on, the hills, tribulations, trials, the tests. But in it all, you said that he is able to do super abundantly over and above according to that power that works in us. If that power works and it works in us, then this is all possible. Thank you, Father, that we can understand this, that we can pursue this. I pray for hunger, supernatural hunger in your, in your children's lives. I pray for that supernatural faith. I pray for that supernatural love. That first love, I pray that that first love will come back. People will love you, love you so much, more than life itself. I praise you for our house. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. We know, I know, that we are in the process of something great. And for that, we say thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a